Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 2. In this tutorial we're going to create some materials to make our game look a little more colourful and we're also going to add in some obstacles ready for when we actually have things to avoid. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now we've been dealing with this particular scene and I think I probably should have mentioned it last tutorial but this scene that opens by default is already a scene in here called sample scene. Uh, it's okay to use this one, uh, you could have created a new scene if you wanted to, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, at the end of the day we can actually change the name of this scene if we want to. It's probably also worth noting that this is also an asset, so the scene itself, although it contains many assets, is an asset of itself. So here, although we have three assets, this scene is also an asset. You can see it's called sample scene.unity. So anything with .unity is a scene. So let's now create some materials to make our running bit look a little better rather than just a big white gray box. So let's click on assets up here and go to the main folder, right click, create folder, and let's call this materials. In here, let's right click, and at the top you've got a little option that says create, and then a massive list of things that you can create. Now a lot of these aren't going to matter too much. Um, realistically the things we'll be using the most are things like the script uh, and material, which is obviously what we're going to click now, but there are many, many different things that you could choose here once you get into further development. So for now, let's just create a material. So let's click it, and we can call this anything we want. Obviously, let's make it something relevant. So we're going to make it a color. Uh, we're going to make it probably a sandy kind of color, like on the thumbnail of this uh, series. So let's just call this light brown. Obviously, if you want to make it gray, you can. If you want to make it black, if you want to make it red, pink, doesn't matter. Anything at all. So over here in the inspector panel, you'll notice that things do look a little different. Now, do you remember when I said that every object must have a transform component, but it's not there right now? That's because this material is not in the scene. It's not physically in the scene, and you cannot physically add a material as an object in a scene. A material is attached to an object rather than its own object. So how do we do this? Well, we could change the shader if we wanted to. We'll get around to shaders later on in the series. Uh, we want to make sure that the rendering mode is opaque because we want to be able to completely see it. We don't want it translucent. Uh, we don't want to be able to see straight through it, things like that. Uh, we have the option to add a texture, uh, but I'm not going to, at least not yet anyway. Um, a texture is basically a way of applying, you could think of it as an image, to the material to display on an object. Um, I'm going for a kind of low poly aesthetic, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't. If you want to add a texture, you would just drag and drop a texture into this section, or you could click the little button here and select a texture that you've imported into Unity. For now, let's just stick with the color. So let's select the color, and we want it kind of a light brown color, so maybe that kind of sandy color. Yeah, that'll probably do for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is, even though we've only set the colour, I'm actually going to drag and drop this material onto this object. So drag and drop, and we can see it changes. Now the great thing about this is we can change this real time. So once we have the material applied to an object, we can actually change how the colour looks. So we can change it, make it darker, lighter, it's up to you. So you can see how it's changing all the time. Now you can change the alpha but that's not going to have any effect at all because we are in the opaque rendering mode. If you do want to change that you can go to fade or transparent and play around with it that way. Next down the list we have the metallic and smoothness slider so we can make it much more metallic which would make it a bit shinier, same with smoothness, but sand isn't reflective so we're not going to have that. We've made a mistake. How do we get back? It's the same as you would do on, let's say, Windows. You would hold Control, press Z or Z to undo and get back to your original position. Source can either be metallic or albedo. 
and you can see once again it does impact how it looks um i would probably go with albedo but bring the smoothness down um, if you increase the metallic once again you can see that you have that kind of effect but if you want to go with that effect let's say you've got a metal level uh, you're running on a spaceship or something then yeah probably increase the metallic look of it uh, for now i'm going to bring it back down to there and again you can play around with it and just get it to how you want it to look next we have things like a normal map a height map occlusion detail mask these things are all about giving extra detail to um, your material so for example if this was let's say a metal crate texture it would just look flat if we were to apply a normal map to it and a height map it would make it look 3d it would still be flat but it would give a 3d imagery to it so it would make it look a little better so we're not going to do that with the sand at the moment um, like i say if you play the Timmy and Mousy that I linked in the last tutorial, or have at least looked at it, you'll probably understand where we're going from at this point. Uh, but we probably will end up dealing with things like normal maps later on in development because they are relevant, they are useful, and they can make things look even better. Next thing we have is emission and tiling and secondary maps. Because this material is so simplistic, we don't really need to deal with that. All of these are only really useful when it comes to texturing an actual material, which again, we probably will do at some point. But for now, we just want a platform, an area where we're going to be able to have our runner run. So as it stands, I'm happy with how this is going to look. And I think it depends on how you want it to be. I know it looks very simplistic right now, and we are technically already, what, 25 minutes into this entire series. But you have to think of it as development can always take, it takes years for, for some games to be made. Keep that in mind. So what do we do next? Well, I like this. So I'm thinking maybe we should duplicate it. Let's make another one over here and give ourselves an area that we can run in. So let's take this cube. Let's right click and let's rename. And let's call this um, sand floor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and press D to duplicate. And you'll see that although another one has appeared here, nothing seems to have changed in the scene. However, if we move this particular object, we'll see there is now two of them. So this is our original one. And this is the one we have just duplicated. So I'm going to hold control and press Z or Z to undo and move it back here. We want to align this object with the first one we created. And to do that, we need to snap it. If you hold control and move, it doesn't look like it right now, but they are moving in increments of 0 0.25. And you'll see that up here. If I move it, you'll see that it's only moving in increments of 0 0.25. However, if I let go of control and try moving it, you'll see that it just moves in whatever increments it feels like. It, well, that's what it seems like anyway, but it technically isn't. So what is snap settings? Snap settings allows you to move it to a accurate position. And how do we modify that? Well, if we go down to edit and down here, you'll see grid and snap settings. If we select this, we can change the increment snap. I always like to have it set as 0 0.25, but if we set this as one and press the X, now, when we hold control and move this object, you'll see that it snaps in increments of one up here on the Z axis on the position in the transform component. So we can snap it so it lands exactly where it should do. So now those two objects look absolutely seamless. In the game view, you can see they do look seamless. So snap settings are very useful in that sense. Um, let's go to our snap settings once again. And in fact, let's change it to 0 0.5. I feel like that might be a little bit more appropriate for what we're creating here. So let's now add some more objects which can be used as obstacles. So let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object and let's also go to cube. Now you'll notice, hopefully, that this particular cube has been set at a very weird random location. It's always best, at least in early stages of development, to reset that to zero. And you can see, if you zoom in, 
you do get a little glitch going on because the object is intersecting in an exact position. That exact position being, if we click this one, you can see this is also set to 000, so is this one, so it can go a little weird. Now, these obstacles that we're creating now are basically going to be invisible, but we'll have models inside them. So, a good way of thinking of this is let's pretend that this is going to be a tree. So let's increase the scale of this on certain aspects, but decrease it on others. So we want it to be taller. So let's have, let's say, three. And the scale is going to be thinner. So this is going to be like a tree trunk. So we'll have 0 0.5 on the X and 0 0.5 on the Z or Z. And then again, if we hold control and bring our object up, we can snap it directly to the floor. So right now, although it just looks like a cube, this will eventually become a tree. And let's also take this cube once again. And in the hierarchy, hold control, press D, and we've duplicated it. Let's reset the scale back to one by one by one and bring it back down to the floor. Let's move it over here by snapping it and over here. Let's actually decrease the size of the height. So let's have 0 0.5. And I'm not going to snap this one. I'm actually going to lower it down very gently. It doesn't matter if it intersects with the ground because at the end of the day, like I say, this is just going to be an outline for obstacles. So this could be maybe a stone or a rock or something like that. Uh, let's do one more. Let's go game object, 3D object, cube. And let's zero out the position up here on transform. So zero, zero, and zero. And let's make this a big, massive rock. Um, so let's have this as two by two by two. And let's bring it up and over here. And that's going to basically be a big rock. Uh, finally, let's rename these objects in particular because they are not exactly great named. They're just called cube, cube, cube. So this first one we said was going to be a tree. So I'm going to have that tree zero one. This one was going to be a rock. So rock zero one. And this one uh, is going to be a big rock. So big rock zero one. Now, as I said, I, I know it looks very primitive right now, um, but rest assured, once things all come together, and they will come together pretty quickly, it will look really, really cool. So the last thing that I want to do is I want to add in another cube, which is actually going to be the player. So game object, and let's have 3D object, cube. Once again, let's zero, zero, zero. And the player is going to start over here. So let's have him start roughly about there. And I want this player to be probably too tall by 0 0.5 on the X. And maybe that's too small, maybe 0 0.75 and 0 0.75. Might still be too tall, so maybe 1.5. Okay, I think that looks... I think that should do. So you'll notice it is intersected into the ground very slightly. Or well, if we bring it up once again, we need to adjust that. So you can manually adjust it here. Or again, let's go to our snap settings. Change this to 0 0.25 and then snap. Just too much. So this actually brings me to something very interesting and something I quite like actually. So sometimes snap settings are great, but when you're working with minuscule dimensions, i.e. in this case, because it is 1.5, it can have a negative impact on that snap setting. If this was two, we'd be able to snap it if it was actually behaving, that would be. We'd be able to snap it perfectly to the ground. However, because the size is a little different, you may have a little difference here and there but again don't worry about it because if it's even if it's not touching the ground it's not going to worry too much it's all about when we put the model inside of this cube that will make the difference uh, so for now let's leave that as it is and next tutorial what we're going to do is we are going to start with our c 
sharp programming. And we're going to get this cube moving along its trajectory, ready to go. Uh, now, obviously, the, there's a lot of things to do. As long as we get the basics down when it comes to programming, we should be okay. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.